What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Today, we're gonna work on something very near and dear to my heart, something very special to me. I don't expect the video is gonna get a lot of views, but this really isn't about the views. This is about bringing my grandfather's 1994 Jawa Baba, Babeta, Babeta, I don't know. It's a 94 Jawa, something most of you probably haven't heard of. It's an old moped from uh, Czechoslovakia. If I remember correctly, I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that's where the bike comes from. Um, it's a single speed 49cc moped. It's got pedals, it's got a chain. You can actually pedal it like a bicycle. It's, it's really a bicycle with a little teeny tiny motorized assist. My grandpa passed away a very, very long time ago. Um, I got to know him as a little kid. I didn't get to know him as an adult myself. And, and that, 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 that just, that tears me up, man, because I loved my grandfather. But I'm so excited that we have his bike here. And I've seen a lot of comments, people being a little bit hateful, a little bit rude, saying that uh, my grandfather should have bought a better moped. He should have bought a Honda. Well, that's neither here nor there because he didn't. This is what he bought. My grandparents didn't have a whole lot of money, and uh, this he bought brand new. Brand new. So for him, this is probably a pretty, pretty big accomplishment. He's probably very excited about this. Don't get me wrong. My grandfather had cars. He always loved old cars, classic Cadillacs. He had some nice cars. All right. It wasn't like my grandpa never had anything in his whole life, but towards the end of his life, you know, he didn't have a whole lot of money. And uh, I don't know why he ended up on a moped. Maybe they took away his license. Uh, that wouldn't surprise me <laughs> one bit. So he found something that had a small enough engine that he could ride without having to pedal himself around everywhere that still gave him that freedom uh, without requiring registration, insurance, or a driver's license. So without further ado, let's get into it. It's been parked for at least 20 years. I pulled it out of, out of uh, storage where my uncle had it at his house. And uh, this means the world to me. I know nothing about mopeds, zero zilch, nothing. But I've got some tools, I've got some parts that I ordered that I suspected might be problematic. So I'm hoping we can get it at least running, maybe even take it out for its first ride if it runs in this video. So here it is, I'm gonna show you some parts that I've got. There's some essentials that we're missing. Uh, one of them was the chain. You need that chain because that's how you start it. You have to pedal the bike from what I understand. I, again, I know nothing about this. I've done a little research but from what I understand, you have to pedal the bike to kickstart the engine. Um, yeah, I, I, I put air in the tires. The tires are very old and they are very cracked, but they have held air for weeks now. I've had this for quite a while and I haven't touched it. So what I've got is I've got the, uh, the chain for the pedals, which quite honestly looks relatively new. That's a good looking chain. We've got the engine drive chain which this one already has, but it is, miss it is missing the pedal chain. We're also missing a pedal. So I found a pair of Jawa pedals uh, that should work absolutely fine with this. These seem to be real common failure points um, made in Hungary. This is the coil and, uh, and there is your plug wire. This piece right here, I don't know what this is, to be honest with you, I, I don't know what this is, but again, made in Hungary. Um, this is another really, really, really big failure point on these bikes from what I have read. But again, I don't even know what this is. I couldn't tell you where it goes if my life depended on it. Now, this is a two stroke. So I've got 3.2 ounces already measured. I've got a few gallons of gas here. I don't have a one gallon gas can. So I'm gonna do what you're not supposed to do. And I'm gonna put gas in this jug of empty, this empty jug of coolant. We'll mix it, get an approximate one to uh, uh, 40. I think we're doing a 40 to one ratio on this. And uh, a couple other things. Over here, this is why I bought some of the parts. This is the coil right here. And as you can see, the the plug wire is, is missing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull the spark plug out. We'll see what it looks like. I may spray a little bit of WD-40 or something in there to help clean that out. But we're gonna change this coil for sure. This may not have that piece that I bought. That piece that I bought may not actually go to this model of bike. I don't know, but I bought it anyway. Another thing that concerns me is, I don't know what this is. This piece right here, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what this is. So it looks to me like a generator. 
That's what I believe this is. I believe that once you get this going, this produces the power, which is why you gotta kick it. This gets the power going, that jump starts the coil, and gives you power to run your lights and stuff. Now this is obviously gravity fed. It's had no fuel in it in, in forever, so that's good. I did pull out. The, uh, this is a filter. This tall piece right here is a filter. She's dry as a bone. Look at all the crap falling out of it. I'm just going to clean this out, a little bit of carb cleaner, and I'm going to run some compressed air through it to clean it out. This part is already clean, gravity fed. You put this back on right here, and it will go down to your carburetor right here. Carburetor, probably junk. Uh, should we take it off? Probably, but we're not going to. I'm going to take that plug out, lubricate the internals a little bit. We're going to need to clean. I don't know how well you can see, but this is rusty. This is real rusty. All right, so we're going to need to get in there with a little bit of sandpaper, I guess. And we'll try, to, we'll try to clean up that rust a little bit. See, that one's not rusty. But most of them are pretty rusty, so we definitely want to clean that up as well. There's the drive chain, which it has. But to put the, uh, to put the other chain on it, we're going to have to unbolt this back wheel. Uh, so, yeah, I guess we should probably focus on, number one, cleaning that up, getting the fuel system cleaned up, and... Uh, Get some gas and oil in it. Pedals, we got a little bit to do, but it shouldn't take too long. So there's absolutely no shortage of different ways we could start this video. We got to get it all done so it doesn't really matter. Flathead screwdriver, looks like that will take the coil off. We've got the black wire on the outside. We've got a yellow wire in the middle. We've got a tan wire on the inside. That's more for my own reference than for you guys. I doubt any of you are going to be working on one of these at any point in the near future. But uh, just in case I forget, well, now I know. So I'm going to pull this coil off. Let's get the new one on. And with a few more turns of the screwdriver, looky there. We've got a we've got a new coil installed. Well, used. Good luck finding new parts for this. If any of you know where new parts can be sourced for this, definitely let me know. I have had no luck finding anything yet. So we've got the wires connected. Everything looks to be nice and secure. This part is great to have because now you can actually install it onto the plug. That's that's how it's supposed to go. Without that, I promise you, it's not going to run. Next, why don't we jump into this spark plug real quick. Let's pull that bad boy out. Let's see what it looks like and maybe spray just a little bit of WD-40 down in there. To get this out, it's a 13 16 She was more than willing to come out. Didn't give me a fight at all. See what she looks like. Not too, not too bad, honestly. There it is. Actually, looks that actually looks pretty good. <laughs> that looks really good. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get a wire brush. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. We're going to pour a little or pour spray a little bit of WD-40 in there, just kind of loosen things up a little bit, reinstall the spark plug, and uh, we'll move on to what's next. Probably starting on uh, putting this fuel system back together. All right, we got the spark plug cleaned up. She's a little shinier now. I know it's blurry on your screen. Maybe if I would do it way out here or something, I don't know, but she's cleaned up pretty good. I guarantee you that spark plug will fire if you put some juice to her. So one of the things I did is I sprayed a little bit of carb cleaner into the engine, and now I'm going to spray a little bit of oil. Remember, it's a two-stroke engine, so we're going to give her just a little bit of oil just to lube her up just a little bit. We'll go ahead and reinstall this spark plug. There we go. Easy peasy. Then we can put that uh, that spark plug wire back on there. I think next I'm gonna move over to cleaning this up. Again, I don't know exactly what that does, but it looks like a type of an alternator slash generator. Not too tight. Good enough. Let's put that on there. All right, let's focus on cleaning this up some. Maybe a wire brush or something. I might have some sandpaper, I don't know. We'll start cleaning that up because uh, I know that that is very important. All right, so I'm gonna try to show you what I'm doing here. You see how nasty that is, right? And these, look how bad those are, heavy rust in some places. But you see right there, we started cleaning them up. Looks pretty good. So what I'm doing, so I'm, I took one of these uh, things off. I'll clean the bottom of this up too, obviously. But for now, I'm just focusing on this. Put a little bit of that, very gently, slowly, just a little bit of this. A little bit of this action right here, it doesn't take much.
Just real slow, take time. And I give a little, a little spray of this, and just a little wipe down, and look at the difference. Look how much better that looks compared to this right here. We'll do that about 30 more times, and then we can start putting the fuel system back together. All right, we've got most of this thing cleaned up now. Take a look at those. That was actually, that was absolutely just covered in rust. That still looks pretty nasty on the outside, but that shouldn't matter. As long as these contact points are clean, and this is clean, that should be all we need, hopefully, unless something else is wrong with it, to get some juice flowing. All right, now that we got that done, I simply sprayed this out with a carburetor cleaner, and it flows freely. I'm very surprised. It didn't, it didn't need much help. There's nothing in there, so we can go ahead and let's just spin that sucker right back on there. We'll get it lined up where we want it. Uh, looks like this will just slide right back on there. And uh, we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. Spark plug's cleaned up. Those contacts are cleaned up. New coil is installed. Fuel tank is coming back together. We gotta put a couple pedals and a chain on and, and, and put some gas in it. I'm crossing my fingers. I'm really nervous. I'm really excited. This thing could run or it might not, but either way, if it's got pedals and I can ride it, we'll at least take it out. We'll take it for a ride. <laughs> I'm taking it out for, I'm taking my grandpa's bike out for a ride in this video. It's taking a little longer than I anticipated. So here's what I did. I came over here and I got the wheel unbolted, just like a bicycle, right? I mean, it really is. It's like a bicycle. You got your adjusters right here. You can take it out and leave those attached um, without having to adjust them any. Um, obviously, it's your pedal. The chain's gonna go here. You had to take off the chain guard, but chain goes here just like a bicycle runs straight back to the wheel Not a big deal. You got a little chain tensioner right there. Probably some kind of a nylon type of deal It's a little loose, but it'll be fine. The problem I'm having is shouldn't this be Like a freewheeling bike like a BMX bike Shouldn't this sprocket because imagine if there's engine power going to it shouldn't this sprocket freewheel because it doesn't Freewheel. It doesn't freewheel at all. I have uh, been tapping it with a, with a hammer and a screwdriver gently, backwards and forwards, both directions, and she doesn't freewheel. So here's where I'm at. If this thing can't freewheel, I guess I, I guess the problem is I don't understand how this bike works, but on a normal bike, if you were to start pedaling and, and that doesn't free spin, if you get going 15, 20 miles an hour, those pedals are gonna be going 15, 20 miles an hour with you. That could hurt, ask me how I know. So generally speaking, <laughs> you want a bike that can freewheel when you're trying to, when it, when it wants to go backwards, this spins without the pedals doing anything. So you can pick up the pace when you want to or let off and the pedals won't fly and knock into your legs. So that is a little bit concerning. I'm certain that is supposed to freewheel. Uh, now again, I could be wrong. This right here appears to be some kind of a clutch And I can hear compression in the engine, which is good. I can hear the exhaust going putt, putt, putt. Uh, that's awesome. Okay, so she got a little bit of compression. Um, I'm gonna play with this a little more, maybe spray a little WD-40 on it. I guess I could be wrong. Maybe that's not how this works. I, I'm certain though, if this doesn't free spin and this wheel is spinning, those pedals are gonna be going like crazy. And I'm certain that that is not the way this thing would have been made. So give me a few minutes. Let's see if we can figure something out. All right, update time. We got a chain. I got it freewheeling somewhat. So I'm going to have to keep a very close eye on that. Uh, it took a lot of WD-40, a lot of tapping, 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 tapping. It's freewheeling. It's not right. So I'm going to have to watch those pedals. Went ahead and shot a little lube into the pedal spro sprocket uh, just for good measure. The wheel is not bolted on, but it is on. So now the fun part comes in where we have to make sure the chain stays on this drive wheel right here, uh, which it's not, it fell off, so that's great. We'll have to fix that. But uh, once we get that on, we gotta get the wheel centered. You don't want the wheel just being crooked or anything. You need to get the wheel as centered as possible in there. Uh, then we gotta make sure both of these chains are tensioned properly. Once we do that, we can throw this, we can actually throw this shock absorber back on right now. Okay, maybe not one-handed. We're close, guys. We're close. I'm going to button this up, and then I think, unless I'm mistaken, 
we put the pedals on and pour some gas and oil in it, it's time. Uh, there's nothing left to do but find out if it's going to run. Whew. <laughs> Who thought something's this small could be this damn tiring? <laughs> Guys, we got it back together. Uh, it's got no rear brakes. Um, I do have them hooked up. may just be a, a deal they're not adjusted. Yeah, they're just not adjusted right, I guess. Uh, may need to adjust the rear brakes some. But we got the pedals. We got it all together. Just no gas. But look at this. Look at this. And look at that. I'm going to knock it over. Now, my biggest problem is this engine doesn't turn over when you spin it. But here's something I found out as I was playing with the pedals. If you really get on it, okay, you really got to put some pressure on it. See that? You really got to give her the beans. When you do that, see that? She spins over. Sometimes. Ah! <laughs> now, like I said, there's no fuel in it, so she shouldn't run. But she does turn over. Yeah! <laughs> oh! Oh! I, I, listen, I'm trying not to have any real expectations that it's going to run. I know that I don't know anything about this bike. We haven't done anything to address any possible carburetor issues. And even if we do get it running, the chances of it actually driving <laughs> and riding are probably slim to none. But I, I'm excited. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mix together a little bit of oil, a little bit of gasoline. I'm going to pour about a gallon into the tank. And we're going to see what she does. All right, it's not quite a gallon. It's close, though. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited. Like I said, I don't expect it to run. But man, if it did, it would just make my absolute day. All right, here we go. She's got gas. It's all up to the bike now. And uh, the carburetor, <laughs> for sure. Cross your fingers, guys. This is a, it's a big deal to me. So, I guess the next thing to do is probably move this stuff out of the way. There we go. Get all this crap out of the way here so that we don't risk hitting anything. Should we turn on the fuel? Oh, that's reserve. There we go. I think that's fuel, right? On. It's bubbling. Leaking. Leaking. Carburetor leaking. I don't see anything leaking. Okay. So far, so good. So far, so good. Now there's a choke. I see air. Oh, it's leaking a little. Hold on. Where's that leak coming from? Oh. Tell you what we'll do, we'll shut that valve off. I wonder where that's leaking from. Is it leaking from the valve itself? The hose? I don't know. Here's what we'll do. Just be on the safe side here. Let's go ahead and let's shut it off. That stopped the leak. So it must be leaking out of the valve then. All right, well, We've pumped the choke a couple times. Are you ready? I think this is the kill switch for the ignition. There we go. She's popping. <laughs> I'm, I'm running the bike all over the shop here. Let me see if I can find something to sit this on, guys. Hopefully that's a good angle for you guys. I'll try to keep myself out of the picture as much as possible. All right, here we go. Come on, old girl. She doesn't even sound like she's trying. Come on. 
No, it doesn't sound like she's doing anything. Come on, girl. Come on. Come to life. Whew. I wonder if I could just... Could I just sit on it and... I mean, you gotta really give it to beans, though. Nah. Okay. Well, doesn't seem like that's doing anything. So give me a minute. Let me take a quick look at it. All right, so here's what we got. The spark plug is flooded, soaking wet. I wanna know if we got spark. You can't see it, but I got the spark plug hanging out. And I'm gonna give it a quick kick. It sparks, good spark. Engine's got good compression, you can hear it. All right, I've shut the fuel off. I'm gonna spray a little carb cleaner in there. Dry this thing out a little bit. We'll put the plug back in. Let's see if we can get it to kick off even for just a minute. Just had to open up a, a stuck closed choke. Yeah. Come on, old girl. There it is. There it is. <laughs> oh my God. My grandpa would be so thrilled right now to see this thing running. Look at the smoke. Wow. Oh my God. Oh my God. I wonder if the lights work. Yeah, we got a light back here. Listen to her purr. The carburetor's a little gummed up for sure. I don't think we have any back brakes either, no. Brake light works too, look at that. Oh my goodness. Well, this was my goal guys. I just wanted to get it running and she runs. All right, I did what I know I shouldn't have done. I got in here and started fooling with the carburetor and I said I wasn't gonna do this because uh, I'm not a carburetor guy. But with that said, I took the float out. All right, I took out the jets, cleaned them. They were clogged up pretty good. Uh, got everything cleaned out, cleaned all the passages out in the carburetor. Right now I'm adjusting the throttle. The throttle's not quite where I'd like it to be, but it's pretty close. So I'm gonna put the cover back on, mount up the carburetor, try to adjust this throttle just a tad bit more, and then uh, we'll try it again. And if it runs, great. If it doesn't, then I don't know what the hell's wrong with it because it should run. Well, she's back together. Let's turn on the fuel. She's got fuel going down into her now, slowly but surely. I need to remove the gas cap just to help a little bit. Got a few air bubbles up in there. Uh, like I said, I'll be honest with you, I don't expect this going to work. I don't expect this fixed anything. Um, I don't know much about carburetors, although that's a it's a pretty simple carburetor. I adjusted the throttle some, uh, got it where it looks like it should be, not that I would know. Took the float out, cleaned the jets and all that. And, uh, well, now it's just a matter of seeing what she wants to do. She's either going to play ball with us or she's not, so my legs about wore out. That's a definite no. Let me set this camera down. Go ahead and choke it. I don't think it needs to choke though. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Come on, girl. Tired. 
I'm burned out, man. It's been it's been hours. She uh she just don't want to run. So I'm gonna try just. I'll be down. I'll be down. There we go, Grandpa. There she is. There she is. <sighs> <laughs> Hot damn. She's a little rough. She's a little rough. But she runs. And that's not bad for something that's been sitting for 20 plus years. I made a couple changes. I adjusted the uh, gap of the spark plug down to 20 thousandths. It was a 35. So we got it down to 20. The oil gas ratio, I believe, was way off on this. 40 to 1 is wrong. I added about another half gallon of gasoline. That's all I could do. She's putting right along now. Putting right along. Look at her go. Oh, she's flooding. Come on. No. She didn't like that. Horn work? <laughs> no way. <laughs> well, she's starting to uh, starting to run a little better. I expect. There we go. Purr's like a kitten. We're gonna need to open this up. She's gonna die. Yeah, let's open this up. This is getting smoky in here. <sighs> I don't know if I'm gonna be able to ride it. The uh, the throttle is binding. It's definitely sticking pretty good. But she runs. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stop for a minute. Let this place air out. Play with her for a minute more. Let's see if we can uh, possibly take her on a quick little ride. All right, guys, it's time for a ride. Let's see if I can get her to fire up. Oh, come on. Whoa. Woo. Oh, uh, okay. Well, you know. Here we go. <laughs> oh boy. Let's see. Let's see if we can uh Okay, we got we got some brakes, not many. I'm gonna ride it around a block. Whoa, hello. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! Ho ho! <laughs> <laughs> My grandpa's 1994 Jawa Alibaba, whatever the heck it's called, man. Uh, she does need a little bit of work. There's still a, a ways to go with it, but let's just be real. This thing has sat for over 20 years, and uh, I don't want to tell you how far I've actually gone on it, but I've uh, I've taken it about two miles, 
and I've gotten a top speed with my fat ass on it of about 230 miles an hour. No, that's actually closer to my weight. I, I got it up to uh, 30 miles an hour. I've gone a couple miles on it. She seems to be running fine. The carburetor and the throttle, man. This throttle is really bad, so I'm gonna have to get a whole new uh, throttle cable, I believe. It might be worth replacing that carburetor uh, as soon as you start winding it up a little bit. She seems like she starts going strong, but then as you start getting into the throttle, she bogs down quite a bit. So it's gonna need some attention there as well. But I mean, we, we got it where she'll start right up now and she runs. And after 20 years, I'm gonna say that is a hell of a success, man. Uh, I can't wait to show my mom the video. I think she's gonna be really happy to see grandpa's old bike back on the road again. Not to worry, that's it for this video, but there's more videos to come. Don't forget, we got a 1925 Model T. It's pretty much the same thing as this, really. <laughs> it's not a whole lot different sitting over here that we gotta get back onto, and I mean it. I've been saying that for several videos now that we need to get back into it. Not a lot of people are interested in seeing this run, but that's okay. That's perfectly fine. I know a lot of people probably are not interested in seeing my grandpa's bike up and running and riding around, but it's something that I enjoy. It's something that I want to do. And I'm simply sharing the experience for those of you that want to see it on the channel. If you don't want to see this, and if you don't want to see that, there's no need to drop complaints in the comment section. There's really no need to complain about you didn't want to see this. Simply look at the title of the video and then don't watch the video. But that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna get out of here. I hope the ones of you that watched enjoyed today's video. If you did, do me a favor, please hit that thumbs up button. That's one for my grandpa right there, man. Hit the thumbs up button for my grandpa. Drop a comment down below. If you see that I did something wrong, if there's something I missed, if there's something that I need to be focusing on, if you have any suggestions, including where to find parts for this, please, I beg you, drop them in the comments below, or you can email me directly, auto auction rebuilds with an S, auto auction rebuilds at gmail.com. I will look forward to those comments and those emails. Subscribe to the channel if you're not currently subscribed. And until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.